I'm Justin Rigney, I'm owner and operator of Canine Services Unlimited, uh, based out of Knoxville, Tennessee. We are a mom and pop business, my wife and I. We have uh, my stepson just joined the business. He's a former Marine. He's excelled. He's picked up dog training very, very quickly, faster than anybody I've ever seen. So he's really excelling. Uh, we do mostly pet training. Uh, lately, I've had some opportunities that jumped into my lap to do, uh, get back in the working dog community. I spent 17 years as a cop, uh, worked three dogs in my career. That's really my passion. You know, I've been training dogs 30 years. Dogs brought me into law enforcement. I was geeked out about dogs since I was a kid. Uh, I'm really fascinated with learning about dogs' behavior. And actually, horses were my first love, man. I actually wanted to be a jockey back in the day. Discovered food, and that dream was over, man. So, but anyway, man, so fast forward, you know, I have uh, been very fortunate to be around some very, very talented trainers. I call it being, uh, being a victim of your geography. So a lot of folks grow up in an area where maybe there's not the best training or they don't have access to top trainers. For me, I was gifted. I was blessed to have very, very good trainers from the beginning showing me how things are done. And back 30 years ago, the dogs were monsters, man, absolute monsters. You couldn't break. Yeah. So, you know, I played a little pro ball, pro baseball back in the day. I was an athlete. They uh, kind of the folks around me saw that, put me in a suit, put me in a sleeve right away. And I was hooked, man. I was absolutely hooked. Started decoying for some canine groups up in Connecticut where I grew up. And uh, I just heard the war stories, the bailouts, the dog bites. I'm like, man, that shit's for me. When I was a kid, we had a, a all black German Shepherd. We adopted him. He was hit by a car and, you know, the vet did the, the work on him. We adopted him. And, and one day, like for about two weeks after we had him, he started going bonkers in the house, bro, going batshit crazy. So we just kind of hushed him up, went back to bed. And then the next morning we discovered that my old man had two outboard motors on his boat stolen. So bro, that triggered something deep in me, man. Like to, a number one, to never not listen to a dog again. Like that dog told me the story and I did not listen to it. So never again. And then being a victim of a crime, bro, that, that infuriated me. So that kind of put me on that path. And it took me f several years to kind of iron that out. And then when I was given the opportunity to start working police dogs, man, this is it. Moved to Florida in uh, late in 2000, got picked up by the Davie Police Department. The first dog I worked was a dog that I bred. I saw him take his first breath in life raised them up, got them on the road, deployed, and watching them do some damage on some bad people was pretty amazing. And being a dog geek, man, I was like winning the World Series. Next two dogs I worked up in Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, um, got to see some pretty wild things. Retired um, about four and a half years ago, moved up to Knoxville, Tennessee, where we've been blessed to uh, jump in right into a facility that was kind of already cookie cutter, ready to go for dog training. Um, we jumped into a new pet training market. I had to learn Google AdWords and learn social media marketing. The agency I came from had 4,000 employees, man. I never had to advertise one time for training. Phone was blowing up and then moving to a new market, man. I had to learn how to edit and didn't know anything about social media. So went through that whole journey, that trial and error, and I'm still trying to learn it, but it's been growing progressively and just very, very grateful for the opportunities. And now that I'm retired, just training dogs full time, I was always training dogs and then always doing police work, but now just dedicating my time to, to police dogs and, and pet dogs and being able to travel to events like this and see folks and reach folks. And I'm still very much a perpetual student. You know, it never stops for me. This is an industry. This is a, a practice that if you're not held hostage by your own ego and insecurities, it's so wide open. It's, it's ever evolving. You know, as I'm teaching a class here, the next minute I'm sitting in this chair being a student and stealing information. Yeah. I'm not the type of person that can invent things, man. I'm not very, I can't build, I can't build a sandwich, bro. I can't invent shit, but I can steal something, <laughs> grab it, morph it, kind of apply it, and maybe um, regurgitate it to some folks who can understand it as well, man. So that's kind of my path. For the future, for me, I'm very excited about, you know, since I left law enforcement in 2018, like really dedicated everything, all hands on deck to building the pet business. Yeah. It's to the point now where I have a really solid team, and now I can dive back into the working dogs, which is my passion. Um, I have some opportunities that jumped in my lap. It's very early in the you know, incubation stage and it's growing and it's got some, a lot of potential. I'm very excited about that. And, you know, for me, for my education, where I'm, I'm kind of going with my mind is the stuff that Pat Nolan's doing yeah. with the directional work, uh, remote detection, remote surveillance, that that's got me absolutely geeked out. I, in our, in our NEPOPO system, right? The very first question that we ask folks, I ask professional trainers, I ask dog owners, what is it and why is it a dog does what he does? And it sounds like a very generic, vanilla, basic question. But if you can't understand that simple question about how that operating system functions, how it learns, how it perceives the world, you're stuck. You're stuck. It's a brilliant mind. It's a mind that's capable of learning complex behaviors. 
They can retain tremendous amount of information, but how they arrive there is much different than a human. And that's always the big disconnect between dog and human, is that we believe they're born understanding our language. They can make a lot of inferences. They can absolutely learn to connect dots from our stupid mannerisms and things that we do. But unless you understand how truly how that operating system functions in a black and white world, free of gray matter, you're stuck. So that's the one question that I don't hear a lot. It's always about, oh, show me how the e-collar or how do we make them out? If you don't understand how the foundation is laid in their mind and how their being is a predatory creature and how they function 100% to satisfy their predatory instincts, you're stuck. You gotta know that one question. So for a new trainer who's looking to just getting started in the field or has an aspiration to learn, I would say never lose that hunger. And 30 years ago, when, when I started, we didn't have social media. We didn't have these events. So you really had to chase the knowledge. You had to find someone that was skilled and qualified and pursue them and absorb what they have if they're willing to share it. Now it's the flip. So now it's the information error where you're bombarded and overwhelmed with information and not all of it's credible, not all of it's relevant, and some of that shit's fraudulent. There's absolutely no, no absolutes <laughs> in dog training. So understanding the animal in front of you and how to apply the techniques that you've learned, but on the fly, because it's in the moment creature. You know, associative learning is one and a half to two seconds to capture that moment. And you can't think about it, what should I do? And then apply, the moment's gone. So as you start to get more fluent in your techniques and your system, it'll come by rote. It'll be muscle memory. You know, it'll be myelinated in your techniques and it'll just flow. In order to hit that flow state, you're talking years. So the thing is, I would say absorb. The young trainers getting absorbed or get out there. And if there's a trainer that tells you that I want you to kind of isolate you and not let you expand and not let you pursue other knowledge, move on. Because if they're held captive by their insecurity and their ego, they don't want you getting outside the little tribe, that's a problem. I always encourage people to absorb stuff. We could, it could take years to build a dog. It can take a second, a millisecond to destroy it. So there's, you gotta be careful with who you go to. I had, a rule, I had a rule of thumb that I would never take a dog to a seminar. I'd always take an audit position and absorb and see. There's very few trainers on this planet, Bart Bellin being one of them, that I would take the dog to and say, show me. So that's, that's where I, my suggestion would be, man. Get out there and see it. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm trying to be as active as I can on social media. I try to feed that machine constantly, right? Several times a day, she's hungry and she's jealous, right? She wants your attention. So on Instagram, K9 Services Unlimited, letter K, number nine, Services Unlimited. It's the main business page. I have JRig K9 as another account where I do some of my clowning and slapstick humor and stuff like that. And uh, of course on Facebook, uh, K9 Service Unlimited, and then my personal page, Justin Rigney. Um, K9 Service Unlimited.com is our main website. And uh, that's where you can find us.